eyes. Start planning your next fishing adventure today at letsfishnebraska.com. Sponsored by Nebraska Game and Parks, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Early break with Sip and Jake. I'd like to have my fun maybe more like on like a, a Tuesday, like in February or something. Let's see if I can pull a prank on somebody. I, I, yeah, yeah, but not well, on it's prank like It's like total amateur hours. Yeah, it's just like yeah, National Prank Day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do got a little announcement. To make. What's that? Oh, wait, breaking news? I won't be here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa what, can he, this, this, April this. Fool's. Oh, ah! <laughs> he got it. <laughs> He got that's actually well done. It's so good. Early break with Sip and Jake from six to eight every weekday morning on 93.7 the ticket. This is Adam Carricker on the ticket. Position right of the quarterback out of the shotgun first and 20. Tail breaks screen in the air. It is tipped. It is intercepted by Carricker at the Missouri 21 yard line. Live from the heart of Lincoln, America, eight-year NFL vet and All-American defensive lineman, Adam Carricker. Shotgun snap to Everett. He's got the left arm going, and now he's got a whole lot of Adam Carricker. Who rips him down inside the 25-yard line. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com, here's your host, Adam Carricker. Welcome, everybody, to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on this fine Tuesday afternoon. Technically, it's noon, so it's afternoon, so it's the lunch hour afternoon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Adam Carricker on the ticket. If you didn't know, if you didn't know, if you hadn't heard, every day, well, four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, noon to 1 p.m. Central Time. It is the fastest hour in radio here on 93.7. The ticket every Monday and Friday. I'm live. Join me live Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is Carricker Chronicles and the Big 10 Show. But alas, Monday, not a letdown, actually a step up, if I do say so myself. Former All-American quarterback Steve Taylor drops that knowledge from noon to 1 p.m. Central Time here on 93.7. The tickets are tuned in each and every weekday, Monday through Friday, especially Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and even more so on Wednesday to hear myself, noon to 1 p.m. Central Time, grab some lunch, join us, and on Wednesdays, Mr. Steve Taylor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of great interviews I've had the pleasure and frankly the honor of doing recently. If you missed my interview yesterday with former Nebraska quarterback turned rice wide receiver who was at Louisville for a week now training for the NFL draft, Mr. Luke McCaffrey, go check it out. I'm telling you right now, it's an interview that I was surprised he said yes to. Now I've got a great relationship with the McCaffrey family as an overall whole. Apparently uh, Luke's mom when she was pregnant is faster than I've ever been in my life. And if you want to know how that came to fruition, go check out the interview yesterday. But I asked him all the questions the Husker fans have been wanting to ask him for years, whether it's the quarterback position, Adrian Martinez, Scott Frost, whether it's the, you know, were you asked to play wide receiver? What happened to Louisville? Why were you there for seven days? How'd you feel about the switch to wide receiver at Rice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The team choosing not to go to a bowl game in 2020, where he stood on that and what he thought. Okay, and then I had a fan, I gave him the doink, uh, fan question of the week award, uh, asked me a ridiculous question, but that's on yesterday's show as an overall whole. I have fun with it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. The raw honesty. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't, but it is what it is. All right. If you missed that interview, go back and check it out. Last Friday, Jim Pillen, former Nebraska football hall of famer, two time, all big, a performer. He played the monster position, the coolest name I've ever heard for a position in sports. And obviously Nebraska's current governor. I asked him all the questions you could want to ask. 
about Trev Alberts leaving, and man, was he honest, about the hiring process of the new AD, his thoughts on the new AD, about leadership at Nebraska, the Board of Regents, our president-to-be, okay? Go back and check out that interview if you missed it. Some of the other, other interviews I've done, okay, former national champion, uh, an All-American, first-team All-Conference performer, Mr. Steve Warren, join me, Chris Dishman, all right, a Husker legend, multi-time national champion at Nebraska, head Nebraska women's basketball coach Amy Williams joined me. And it's not just Nebraska, ladies and gentlemen. I love getting to talk all sports here on the ticket and national sports. ESPN's Bill Connolly I has joined me, and we had a fun, fun, in-depth, some of it fact-based, some of it hypothetical conversation recently, okay, about college football as an overall whole, the college football playoff, et cetera, et cetera. Now, coming up, okay, later in this hour today, the fastest hour in radio each and every day here on 93.7, the ticket from noon to 1 p.m. Central Time with it's myself, Steve Taylor, and or otherwise. All right, coming up in the remainder of this show, all right, I'm going to give my way too early, way too analyzed. I did way too much research for this. Had w not way too much fun, but a lot of fun. You're going to hear my way too early final record for predict prediction for Nebraska football. Okay, they're over under predicted projected win total seven and a half. Do I have the Huskers at under? Do I have them making a bowl game? Do I have them getting back to eight wins, nine wins? Tune in in just a few short minutes. Okay, and you'll hear that. You will also hear my gut reaction from last week. All right, to our new AD, Troy Dannon's introductory press conference. And I'll be honest with you. I was somewhat, I was more than surprised. I was a little stunned at the lack of attention that was paid to this. Now, I understand. People are to the point where actions speak louder than words. I, I, I'm, I'm past that point, honestly. Okay. But I was a little stunned at the lack of coverage that this, this had, the lack of attention paid to it. But neither, it's neither here nor there. I gave my gut reaction to Troy Dana's introductory press conference. Okay. Because I was interested. You know, he's kind of an important piece to what we're doing here across all sports here at the University of Nebraska. Now him and Matt Rule are going to be working hand in hand with the Nebraska football program going forward okay now he gave such quotes as and i quote we're gonna win end quote and i quote i didn't come home just to come home talking about the midwest here i came home to win end quote now i i did notice when he was saying these things he seemed a little bit surprised that there wasn't more of a reaction to what he was saying now he didn't say anything he didn't make it obvious but you could just like little nuances, and maybe I was reading it wrong. He just seemed a little bit surprised. There wasn't more of a reaction to these proclamations. And first of all, what do you expect him to say? Oh, we're going to come here and we're going to lose. And I came home to lose. Like, you know, he's not going to say those things. Of course, he's going to speak optimistically and positively. He has high expectations for himself, which will, which will then reverberate throughout the programs. I love personally that he hit the ground running. Okay, he technically worked one day for free. All right, if you watch that press conference, all right, interim president here at the University of Nebraska, Chris Kaborg, mentioned that they reached a deal at 351 and Troy hit the ground running, technically worked a day for free. I know you're not going to care about that. But my point is, I legit do believe this is a good hire. Okay, I truly, I truly am excited about this. I think it's an under the radar hire. I think with some of the frustrations recently in Husker, in Husker land and Rightfully so with Nebraska fans, from Trev leaving to Scott not quite working out and other things, you know, and the like, people are to the point where I don't even think it's actions speak louder than words. I think it's in, in the minds of Husker fans, and, and me too, honestly. By the way, if you ever get to know me as a person, I really don't care what you say. I don't. I care about what your eyes tell me, what your body language tells me, and ultimately, I care about this. Your actions speak so loudly, I can't hear what you say. That's how I am in general. I don't care how you act when things are going good. This is me as a person. You want to get to know Adam Carriker as a person? I don't care how you act when things are going good. I don't care how you act. I don't give two cents to this side of a cockatoo's anus how you act when you need something from me. I want to know how you act when you don't need anything from me, and I want to know how you act when the chips are down. That's what matters to me. Now, all right, Husker fans, that was a little bit about me as a person. This is my show, okay? Husker fans in general, just to back off that a little bit, cool down just a smidge. I think Husker fans in general to the point of action speaks so loudly, we can't hear anything you say. So I'm sure Matt Rule feels that. I'm sure he's conveyed that to Troy. I'm sure Jim Pillen's conveyed it to Troy. I'm sure it's been conveyed. 
Okay, but you will hear my gut reaction at the end of this hour to Troy Dannon's introductory press conference a week ago. And I did find some interesting things. All right, Nebraska, I love talking all Husker sports, all of them, okay? I love the fact that our Nebraska men's gymnastics team won the Big Ten regular season championship, and I'm going to be following them going forward. I love that I get to talk national sports. Again, I grew up playing football, basketball, baseball, lifting weights. That, that was my childhood. That was my life. My dad has a degree in carpentry. I can't build crap. Mousetrap. I did a mousetrap in an eighth grade shop class. Okay. My dad has a mechanics degree. Okay. My wife's better at changing tires than I am. She grew up on a farm, small town girl. She's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but that just didn't interest me. My dad tried to teach me all these things. Now, I love shooting guns. I love doing things of that nature. Oh, yeah. But those things just didn't interest me. I wanted to go hit a ball. I wanted to hit a person. I wanted to shoot. I wanted to lift. And that's what I wanted to do, ladies and gentlemen. So I spent a lot of time playing a bunch of sports. So I love talking all sports. And anybody who's followed me knows that I was actually much better at baseball growing up than I was football. But let's talk about Nebraska baseball. Done talking about me. It's my show, but my, my jobs talk about other people and what they do well. Nebraska baseball plays Creighton later today in Omaha. Now Nebraska's record is 20 and 5. They're now the 24th ranked team in the country after winning 10 straight games. They're 9 and 1 at home, 10 and 2 away, 1 and 2 in neutral side games. Neutral side games have not been too friendly so far in this young season. Not as young as it once was, but the Huskers are 5 and 0. Oh. They played five series this year, three games or more. They're 5 and 0 oh in those series. Now, the longer a series goes, the more it becomes about adjustments, the more it becomes about the players adjusting, which becomes more about the coaches coaching and helping the players adjust. So kudos to the coaching staff, Will Bolt, here at the University of Nebraska so far this year. Now, at times this year in Nebraska, early on especially, they had the number one strength of schedule, number two strength of schedule, number one RPI. Now, let's face it, playing in the Big Ten, okay, it's not known for being a baseball conference. Okay, It's harder to get good at spring and summer sports when you play in the cold. It just is, okay? So that's going to hurt Nebraska's strength and schedule and RPI as we go along this year. There's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is beat the teams that are put in front of you, the teams on your schedule, and then get to the postseason and do your thing. Now, on a side note, Nebraska, uh, or, or, let, let me come back to the Nebraska. Well, Nebraska is going to play Creighton three times this year, twice in Omaha. That was my side note, but there it is. Now, Nebraska is one of only, they're the only Big Ten team that's even close to being ranked. But they're one of only three teams in the North that are ranked. Of the top 25 college baseball rankings right now, 22 of them are from the South. And I even asked my, because you got like LSU and you got UC of Dallas or something like that. I was scrolling down. I was like, what the heck? You know, you got all these LSU, Florida State, South Carolina, all these Southern teams. I had to ask my wife. I'm like, I consider, consider Kentucky and Virginia to be in the South. Do you as well? If you look at a map, they feel more Northern to me. But she goes, no, I consider them to be more in the South, and so do I. So 22 of the top 25 baseball teams in the country are from the South. The three Northern teams are Nebraska, Oregon, and Oregon State. Oregon State's been a monster in baseball for a long time, if you didn't know that. I guarantee you they're the best team in the Pac-2 conference right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, see if I can find my spot again. All right, now, Nebraska, when it comes to pitching, Brett Sears leads the Huskers with a 5-0 record and a 1.36 ERA, ladies and gentlemen. That's scolding. All right, hitting. Gabe Swanson is the Big Ten's top returning home run hitter. Now, he's had a bit of a rough season to the start so far, but I'm looking forward to him getting going, and that's going to happen because that dude's a freaking stud. All right, a couple minutes before we take a break. All right, Creighton, 20-4 and four on the season. They've won three in a row. They're 8-2 and two at home, 8-1 and one away. Neutral site st games don't bother them. They're 4-1 and one in neutral site games. They won their first six games of the year, and they've won their seven of their last eight games. Now, let's talk about being a Jasker. I kind of view being a Jasker like I, I view rooting for the Big Ten teams. Like, I don't care who Nebraska's playing in the Big Ten, I'm rooting for Nebraska. So I don't care if Nebraska's playing Creighton. I'm rooting for Nebraska. Now, if Nebraska's not involved, and there's a Big Ten team playing a non-Big Ten team, unless it's Iowa, I'm probably going to root for the Big Ten team. If it's Iowa, we'll just see. Probably not rooting for Iowa. I don't know. I digress. But I'm going to root for Nebraska no matter what. Then if it's Big Ten versus the world, I'm going to root for the Big Ten. I kind of feel the same way about Creighton. I've never been a Creighton fan. I got nothing but respect for their basketball program. Good at baseball, too. Okay, so I got respect for them. Now, when they play Nebraska, it's Nebraska all day, every day, and twice on Sundays. And no questions asked. But if Creighton's playing somebody else, a non-Big Ten team, like if it's Big Ten versus Creighton, I'm probably rooting Big Ten, regardless of the sport. 
But if it's Creighton versus the rest of the earth, that's not a Big Ten team, I'm probably going to root for the team from Nebraska. Now, that doesn't make me a J-Scare, and you'll probably never, ever see me in, in, in a Creighton anything. And that's not disrespectful. I just, I've got 40 million shirts, if you've ever watched my Chronicles sure, show, and I've got about 41 million Nebraska shirts, okay? And yes, half of them are from when I played, and they still fit. Uh, that's a topic for another day. My point is simply this. I don't like j scurring but I don't consider j scurring rooting for Creighton when they're playing anybody who's not the Big Ten and not Nebraska. I'm going to root for the team from Nebraska. Same thing with UNK. Same thing with UNO. Same thing with the Big Ten. As long as the Big Ten team isn't playing Nebraska, if the Big Ten team is non-Iowa and playing Earth, I'm going to root for the Big Ten team. So those are my thoughts on j scurring real quick. All right, now the Huskers, again, ranked 24th nationally. If Creighton wins, do they then become ranked? There's going to be more games. Both these teams play before the polls come out again next Monday. Okay, predicting a baseball game is insanely hard. There's a reason you play best of seven in baseball and basketball. The one-off games, anybody can beat anybody on any given day. That being, it's so hard to predict. And this is a one-off baseball game. They're going to play three times this year, twice in Omaha, but they're not in a row. They're spread out throughout the year. So it's hard to predict. It's not like a football game. It's not like, like it's hard to predict a one game baseball game unless everybody's just throwing their ace. Everybody's playing their best players, which isn't the, which isn't how it works in every single baseball game. That being said, I ain't no Jasker. I got Nebraska winning six to five. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Put lawn irrigation on automatic. Think Judson Irrigation for worry-free service to Lincoln homeowners and business community. Judson Irrigation will turn on your sprinkler system in the spring, repair or redesign as needed, and turn it off in the fall. For service to orphan sprinklers, remember Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick me up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick me up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a million times better. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Here you go. Coffee's on me and my new BFF. I thought I was your best friend forever. BFF like best financial friend at Members Own Credit Union. Right now, they're offering $100 when you consolidate or transfer a loan or an existing credit card balance and meet requirements. Plus, you get great rates and free advice from a financial partner that will put you first. That sounds like a match made in heaven. Members Own Credit Union is the type of bestie you can count on. Get started today at MembersOwnCU.org slash BFF. Limitations may apply. Equal housing opportunity. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln 
on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Go hard Barbecue. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner, or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hog Wild do the cooking. Hog Wild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. At Southeast Community College, community is our middle name. Our continuing education classes offer personal interest, traffic safety and licensing, online learning, and adult education classes across Southeast Nebraska or online in your own home. Learn pottery or floral design. Take a computer course. Learn Spanish. How to start writing a book or Air Fryer 101. See the full schedule of continuing education classes online at southeast.edu slash continuing. SCC, your path to possible. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome to the Carricker Chronicles, the people show. Checking the pulse of Hushkin Nation brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. As always, check them out. The dpsconstruction.net. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year where we have a little bit of fun. I do way too much research and I get my way too early win loss record prediction for Nebraska's football team in the 2024 football season. Now, I actually feel like I'm late to the party. About a month ago, Nebraska's over under win total was put out there for everyone to see, and a lot of reaction shows were done to that at the time. And Nebraska's over under win total is seven and a half. So maybe I'm late to the party. I don't know. This is what I'm doing as spring ball's going on. It felt appropriate. I'll probably update and do a more updated one as we get closer, much, much closer to the season. But let's have some fun right here, right now, like I like to do here on the Character Chronicles. As I mentioned, Nebraska is projected over under win total for the 2024 football season is seven and a half, right? As you look around the conference, USC is projected. Still a, weird to say that they're going to be a Big Ten team, but college football is what it is. USC's over under win total projection is seven and a half. Washington, who, by the way, had 15 players transfer to other Power Five schools. Lost their head coach, lost their AD, thank you very much. Okay, and they had a transfer portal quarterback come in and then transfer back out. All those folks are gone. Only a couple of returning starters from last year's team coming back. They're projected to win seven and a half games. In fact, they have the least amount of returning production in the entire Big Ten. Michigan's second to last. Anyways, I digress. Okay, Texas A&M, by the way, just randomly, our good buddies. All right, they're the most devastated Power 5 program in the entire country when it comes to the transfer portal. A lot of that's due to the number one in history ranked recruiting class that they had a few years ago that obviously didn't go so well. I was just looking at all these numbers and I just thought that that was interesting. How you have the number one ranked recruiting class in history and just a few years later, you're the most decimated team in the country due to the transfer portal. So it's interesting with college football, 
has become, I, I think it does show that you can't just outright buy championships. Like you've got to get the right players that buy into what you're doing as well. All right, other Big Ten team projected win totals. Okay, at seven and a half this year are Maryland and our good buddies, Iowa. Okay, Wisconsin projected win total six and a half. Penn State and Michigan, right? Who again has a new head coach, new offensive line coach, new strength coach. And you got to keep in mind, all right, Shereen Moore, their new head coach was their offensive line coach. Their strength coach was the guy that Jim Harbaugh said was a secret sauce to their entire program. He took their strength coach with him to the Chargers, where Jim Harbaugh is now the head coach. Okay, and Michigan was the most physical football team in the country. That all starts in the weight room. That all starts up front. By the way, Michigan had six offensive linemen who've entered the NFL draft, so they have five brand-new starters across their offensive line as well. But again, Michigan and Penn State, okay, both projected over-under win totals, nine-and-a-half wins this year. All right, now the big favorites in the Big Ten are Ohio State and Oregon. Projected win totals for those two teams are ten and a half. Okay, I did forget to mention, when it comes to Michigan, in fairness to them, their schedule was embarrassingly easy last year, but it is absolutely brutal this year. They played Texas, USC, Oregon with road trips to Washington, and Husky Stadium is an insanely loud place and a hard place to win, regardless of how many people they have coming back or not. They have to go to Columbus as well. They play three of the top four preseason ranked teams. That's pretty hard. All right. So do me a favor, smash that like button if you believe the Huskers will absolutely win at least six games this year. And smash that like button if you absolutely believe Nebraska will make a bowl game this year. And if you're kind of with me, I'm kind of thinking that's that's the bottom of the barrel. That's no longer the goal this year. That's the bottom of the barrel for this season and the over other win total being at seven and a half. We'll see how many I predict at the end of this video. Stay tuned. I think that's about right. Somewhere between seven and eight. I'll give my final predictions here in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now, I have talked about this before, but let's update it just a smidge. Nebraska has the most amount of returning production in the entire Big Ten with 77%. Now, when you break it down just a little bit more, the Huskers are tied for third in the country, third and fourth in the country with Oklahoma State, the most amount of returning starters, both at 77%. Northwestern, all right, number two in the Big Ten, tied for fifth, sixth, and seventh in the country for most amount of returning starters at 76%. Okay, they are tied with Virginia and Kennesaw State. Okay, Rutgers, third in the Big Ten, tied for eighth in the country for most amount of returning production at 74%. Now, number one and two in the country, actually, for returning production, number one is Virginia Tech with 86% returning, and Iowa State with 85% returning. Now, when it comes to offense and defense specifically for Nebraska, Nebraska returns 76% of their production on offense from last year. 78% of their returning production is on defense. That's the most balanced in the entire Big Ten, I might add. Like when you look at number two in the Big Ten of returning production, which is Northwestern, they return 88% of their defensive players, which is the most in the country. And the Huskers return the ninth most amount of returning production in the entire country on their defense. But the Wildcats return 64% of their offensive production, which is 53rd in the country. So Nebraska is top 25 nationally returning production on offense. So again, the Huskers are very balanced when it comes to their offense and defense returning production. It's not one-sided like a lot of the teams tend to be. So hopefully that's a good thing. Now, it may not mean a whole lot, the amount of guys we have coming back, okay, if they don't continue to improve this offseason. And the new guys that we are bringing in at very key spots, if they don't step up. For now, let's break down Nebraska's perceived strength of schedule for 2024. We're going to look at 2023, how it compares to 2024. All right, real quick before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, this show is brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction, your local concrete experts. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. If you're a diesel mechanic, CDL driver, or concrete finisher and looking for work in the Omaha metro area, DPS Construction is the employer for you. Now, let's go backwards before we go forwards. So if you look at Nebraska's 2023 schedule, they had six teams with winning records that they played, seven bowl teams, okay, that they played last year, but only two teams with more than eight wins. Their opponents had a combined record of 71 wins and 73 losses. And if you take the 15-0 Michigan team out of this equation, the Huskers' opponents' winning percentage was only 43%. All right. Now, when you look ahead to this year, the 2024 schedule, Nebraska doesn't start 2024 on the road versus a Big Ten rival like they did last year at Minnesota. They don't start their first two games of the year on the road versus Power 5 opponents like they did last year versus Minnesota. And another rival in Colorado, okay, their first two games of 2024 at home, 
Game one is versus UTEP. Okay, and actually their first four games are at home versus teams that all had losing records last year, including an FCS school who actually had a winning record, but they're an FCS school, no disrespect. Okay, it's a much more favorable start to the schedule in 2024 for Nebraska than it was in 2023, especially those first couple of games. And especially when you consider that we very well might be starting a very young individual at quarterback, whoever that may be, they're probably going to be starting a young quarterback. So that helps us out to start the season. Now, Nebraska in 2024 will play six teams that had a winning record last year. Okay, they will play six bowl teams, which is actually less than we played last year, although I don't consider this year's schedule to be easier. It's certainly not brutal by any stretch. Now, I will point this out. Only one of our first seven opponents had a winning record last year. Now, all five of our last five opponents had a winning record last year. I would divide this upcoming schedule into two parts. The first seven games, and then the last five games. Now, the combined win totals of our Big Ten opponents this year, the toughest part of our schedule, so to speak, would be the Big Ten conference part. Their combined projected win totals for this upcoming year is six and a half per team. And only five of those nine opponents that we have in the Big Ten coming up are projected to have winning records. So now let's go to the schedule just a bit. We're going to start off with UTEP. All right, the UTEP Miners in Memorial State Stadium, good old Lincoln. Now, UTEP a year ago was 3-9. and nine. They have a first-year head coach. I got Nebraska winning that game. Then our good buddies from Colorado. We got lots of good buddies across the country. We're so friendly with everybody. Our good buddies from Colorado, Coach Prime, Mr. Humble himself, they were 4-8 and eight a year ago, finished dead last in the Pac-12. They've got roughly 1,000 new transfers. I'm going to round down with that number, including six new offensive linemen because he doesn't want his son to get killed. And I haven't heard much about addressing their defense, though. They couldn't block anybody up front. Coach Prime addressed that. They couldn't tackle anybody on defense. I haven't heard a lot about that, and I'm curious about that. And I think it's because Dion's focus is honestly winning football games but trying to get his son drafted number one overall. So he's trying to protect his son. He's trying to get him weapons on the outside. So when it comes to Colorado, this may be our toughest. It's, it's, it's absolutely our toughest non-conference game, but it may be our toughest game within the first seven games. Rutgers is the other team. Don't overlook Rutgers, okay? They got a lot of returning production. They're, I believe, third in the Big Ten when it comes to returning production. They're a well-coached physical football team. Greg Schiano's building something good up there again in Piscataway, but I'll get to them in a minute. Colorado's a tough one. I think we win. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be exciting. But I think we win, and here's why. Because had we just taken care of the ball last year, and I've talked about this a million times, and I know what the final score was, but had we just taken care of the ball last year, that first half looks completely different. The first three quarters go completely different, and our defense isn't worn out in the fourth quarter. If we just take care of the ball this year at home, I think we got a good chance of winning this game. Now, maybe Colorado comes in, get, gets the win, and I puke, whatever. But I'm going to go with Nebraska getting that win off the bat all right, against Colorado. Next up, we play Northern Iowa, who's an FCS team. All due respect, they were 6-5 and five a year ago. I got Nebraska winning that game. Next up is Illinois. They had a disappointing 5-7 and seven season a year ago in year number two under Brett Bielema. Okay, now they are projected to have a losing record again this year. I like the fact that we have so many home games, especially with a young quarterback. I do have us beating Illinois at home as well. Now you look at Purdue, our first road game. This was a team that was four and eight a year ago, and they're the projected worst team in the in the Big Ten when it comes to win-loss totals going into the 2024 season. They're projected to be the worst team in the Big Ten. So for me, that's a game five on the road. Our quarter, our quarterback is developing and young, gaining experience. That's a great first road game. I have us beating Purdue. Okay, now next up is probably our toughest conference opponent within our first seven games, which is Rutgers. I, I talked about them a little bit earlier in the show. Now, they were 7-6 and six a year ago. They're going to be a tough game, okay? I like that we get them at home. I, I just think we have more talent across the board, and I think everything given e being even across the board, because I don't know that we're just a significantly better overall team, but I think everything even across the board, the home field advantage and the fact that we're a little bit more explosive, we're definitely more explosive than they are. Okay, I think Nebraska gets the win. All right, so that, that's 6-0 and oh right off the bat. Okay, and then you got Indiana, who was 3-9 and nine a year ago, only our second road game. They were 1-8 and eight last year, the worst team in the Big Ten last year. We also get a bye week right before this game. I got us winning. Now, is it possible that we could be 7-0 and oh after our first seven games? Yes, it is. It's very realistic. If you look at this, our first seven opponents have a combined 26 wins last year and 47 losses. Okay, when, when you look at the Division I opponents. I'm just looking at Division I opponents. No disrespect again to Northern Illinois. But our first seven opponents won 35% of their games last year. A little over a third. So that means they lost almost two-thirds of their game. Now, in my opinion, could we absolutely be 7-0 seven seven heading into the last five games? 
if we're going to try to win seven, eight games, whatever the case may be, we need to be at least six and one heading into Columbus and the home stretch of our season, which is the last five games, part two of our schedule. This schedule is not as brutal as it could have been, especially compared to what a new Big Ten schedule could possibly look like. So that all being said, I also know and love Nebraska football. Something tells me somewhere along the way we may lose a game that we shouldn't lose. I'm not hoping that, but I'm going to have us, even though game by game, I have us winning every game. Somewhere along the way, there's a stumble, okay? Hopefully I'm wrong, but I have us six and one. I don't know where the stumble is going to be. I prefer it not be against Colorado of all teams, okay? But I actually am going to go six and one. When I look at the first seven games as a whole, maybe there's a stumble. Hopefully there's not. I got a six and one to be clear after the first seven games. So you look at our last five opponents, okay? Ohio State was 11 and two a year ago. UCLA was eight and five. USC was eight and five. Wisconsin was seven and six. Iowa was 10 and, 10 and four. Our last five opponents won 44 games, lost 22. This is rocket science math here. They won two thirds of their game and they lost a third. Okay, so our combined win-loss total of our upcoming opponents, Division I opponents for next year, was 70 wins, 69 losses as a whole. Now, you look at these last five games. I got a 6-1 and one going into Columbus. All right, this Ohio State team may be the best team in the country, okay? They're probably going to come in preseason number two. I know a lot of people like them number one. They're the only, the only team, Big Ten team, that's really considered to actually be able to challenge them this year is Oregon, who's a top-four team right now as well. Okay, who knows? Maybe we play them tough. Maybe we pull off the upset right now at this moment in time in April. I'm recording this on April 1st, so maybe it's April Fool's. Who knows? Okay, I have us losing, hopefully a tight, close game. Maybe we get the win rooting for that, but I got a 6-2. and two. Then we go to UCLA. Now, this is a UCLA team that I actually consider to be really talented and athletic, but they have a lot of program question marks. They just do, including a first-year head coach in Deshaun Foster, who's a UCLA legend. He's never even been a coordinator. He's been a running backs coach for a long time, never even been a coordinator, never called plays once. And he's going to be not only a first-year head coach, but the first time being more than a position coach. And that's, I love position coaches, obviously, I had a million of them, but there's a big gap there. So to me, coming into Lincoln, a, a program that's trying to kind of find their own footing, the advantage that we're going to have in year two under Matt Rule, I think we get the win that puts us a seven and two after nine games. USC, our next opponent, okay? Well, you look at our last three games as a whole. Let's start with that. All the, all the programs have huge question marks for me, or are huge question marks for me when it comes to predicting a win or a loss. All three are very good programs and good teams with a lot of question marks coming into this year. You look at USC, our next opponent. They're start basically starting completely over with how they do a lot of things within their program. Lincoln Riley has admitted it. Instead of taking the next step in year three under Lincoln Riley, they're kind of starting over when it comes to defense. When it comes to size, they're really small on defense. They weren't even that fast with how they recruit and trying to build a little bit of toughness, which Lincoln Riley teams have always been explosive, but never good at defense or as awful, to be honest, and not incredibly physical. He's trying to kind of start all the way over with how he does things at USC. They're an explosive team and they're going to score. This was a tough one. Going to the Coliseum and playing at USC, it's this could go either way. I do think the warmer weather, it's not going to be like Miami hot but when you go from 20 degrees in November in Lincoln to 70 or 80 or whatever it is, it, that's, a, that's a big change in, in temperature. While it's not a million degrees, maybe that has a little bit of effect. I do have USC winning this game, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be highly entertaining. Okay, so that would put us, if my math is correct, at seven and three. Are we going to be over seven and a half or under seven and a half wins? All right, Wisconsin, talking about question marks with some of these teams. Year two under Luke Fickle, they're still trying to implement a new spread offense that they didn't do very successfully a year ago, although they won seven games, if I remember that correctly. Okay, still a good coach, still got talent, still a good football team and program, although they are projected to win less games than Nebraska. You look at Iowa. Now, they're going to do what Iowa does. They're going to play good defense and special teams. The question I have is, are they actually going to try to score points on offense this year. Who knows? They were the worst 10-win team in the history of college football last year, including scoring the least amount of points by a 10-win team in the history of college football. And college football, their first game was played between Rutgers and the College of New Jersey, now known as Princeton, in 1869. Statistically, by far the worst offense and the worst team that's in the history of college football. It's won 10, 10 games. But guess what? They still won freaking 10 games. They just do what they do, and I, I almost respect that, okay? I think we split those last two games between Iowa 
and Wisconsin. And I think Nebraska ends up with a final record of eight and four. Now, the third and final component that I have not talked about yet when it comes to wins and losses is the new players. Okay. The wide receiver transfers, Jamal Banks and Isaiah Nair, for example, are they going to step up? Are they going to make an impact in a place where we need it? Offensive lineman Micah Bazooka stepping step in. The running back's position is Oregon transfer Dante Dowdell. Or one of our returning running backs going to be the starter and take the bull by the horns, although I think multiple running backs will get carries every game. Okay, is it going to be Gabe Irvin, Ramirez Johnson, maybe Quentin Ives? who Matt Rules talked about a lot. Quinton's getting a lot of the reps in spring ball right now with some of our current running backs banged up. Who's going to step up? And defensively, we don't have a whole lot of question marks, but who's going to replace Luke Reimer and Stalwart, a stalwart like Nick Henrich? Syracuse transfer Stefan Thompson is working hard, man. He's busting his butt, maybe having a bit of a rough off season, a, a little bit, but he played three years in Tony White's scheme at Syracuse and started, has a ton of starting experience. But who else steps up throughout this team at the quarterback position? Going to be talked about a ton. Is it Dylan Raiola, Daniel Kalen, or Heinrich Harburg? Also, what about some of the other guys on the team? What about Malachi Coleman? Absurdly talented. What about Jalen Lloyd? Incredible speed. What about offensive alignment? Who's going to step up at that left tackle position? Teddy Prohaska or Turner Corcoran? And what about the other guard spot across from Micah Mazuka the Bazooka? Is it going to be Justin Evans Jenkins, who I've spoken highly of? Okay. Played as a young guy last year. Do me a favor. I kind of gave away what my next show is going to be, but that's okay. Keep an eye out for it. Keep an eye out for my next show next week, okay? And if there's any gut reactions or any necessary shows later this week, but my plan next show is Tuesday of next week. I'll rank my top new impact players next year. All right, now I got questions for you fine folks at home. As always, hit me up in the comments below. Will Nebraska somehow start 7-0 and next year? To be clear, I'm saying 6-1, and even though I think we're going to be better than the first seven teams. Rutgers won't be a gimme. Colorado won't be a gimme. My official prediction is 6-1 and after seven games because they're 22-year-old, 18-year-old kids, and the ball bounce is funny. Okay, but I would take 6-1 and after our first seven games. How many of Nebraska's last games will they win? That second half, that's that home stretch of the schedule, will they win two or three? Those seem to be the most likely options. And what will Nebraska's final record be? I have them at eight and four. I'd be pretty happy with eight freaking wins. Would you? What's your final record prediction for Nebraska? I have them at eight and four. And go to characterchronicles.com. At the top of the page, you'll say sign up, you'll see sign up for our newsletter. Do me a favor, sign up for our newsletter so you don't miss any updates that we need to send your way. Until next time, go big red noise. Remember to throw the bow. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today. Some clouds this morning will give way to sunshine this afternoon. It'll be breezy with an afternoon high around 55. Tonight, mainly clear and breezy. An overnight low around 33. And tomorrow, we'll see mainly sunny skies and more wind with an afternoon high around 54. Meteorologist Kyle Clutter for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Are you tired of living in pain? It's time to take control. At Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery, we're your one-stop shop for expert care in Lincoln. From broken bones to complex reconstruction, our skilled team will help you get back on track. Visit prairieortho.com today and discover why we're the trusted choice for thousands of patients. Don't let pain hold you back. Take the first step towards a better pain-free life with Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery where healing begins. Call 402-489-4700. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Hey Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Whether you like fishing together or fishing to get away, for the thrill of reeling in a big one, or just going out to have a good time, on the banks of your local pond, at a bend in a river, 
or in one of our many lakes and reservoirs. You'll always find the perfect place to cast a line here beneath Nebraska skies. Start planning your next fishing adventure today at letsfishnebraska.com. Sponsored by Nebraska Game and Parks, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and would like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. Here you go. Coffee's on me and my new BFF. I thought I was your best friend forever. BFF like best financial friend at Members Own Credit Union. Right now, they're offering $100 when you consolidate or transfer a loan or an existing credit card balance and meet requirements. Plus, you get great rates and free advice from a financial partner that will put you first. That sounds like a match made in heaven. Members Own Credit Union is the type of bestie you can count on. Get started today at MembersOwnCU.org slash BFF. Limitations may apply. Equal housing opportunity. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. To the character chronicles the people show checking the pulse of an excited busy husker nation ladies and gentlemen this is my gut reaction to troy dannon being named the athletic director here at the university of nebraska now the family and i are on spring break hence the beautiful background hey they say if you love what you do you never work a day in your life so i'm technically still on vacation even while i'm doing this right okay so troy dannon all right first of all matt rule said and i quote we took a step forward today and quote now i'm going to cover a whole bunch of things in this video admittedly i had to educate myself as quickly and as fully as i could on our new ad so i'm going to do the best i can with that if i'm a bit all over the place just bear with me let's have some fun together also we pretty much know for the most part who our next president is going to be here at the university of nebraska we have a priority candidate a president again going to be covering a bunch of stuff all right real quick Smash that like button if you're excited that Matt Rule not only has positive things to say, of course, okay, but he has a history on a professional level from his time at Temple, okay, with our new athletic direct, director, and Rule does. He seems legit excited about our new AD, and also smash that like button if you're excited that the leadership here at Nebraska has stepped it up. Now, real quick, put out a lot of content recently. It's been about a week ago, but it kind of got buried with the Trev Alberts gut reaction. If you missed my quarterback, Dylan Riola show, go back and check that out. But I literally just put out like 90 minutes ago, one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. If you don't go back and check out anything that we've done recently, check out my interview with interim AD Dennis LeBlanc. Okay. Truly one of my favorite interviews ever. Smart, intelligent, articulate, raw, 
okay, and hilarious. He talks about briefly Will Compton, yours truly as well, but he shares some hilarious stories about Tom Osborne, Christian Peter, and just a great interview. Check that out if you get a chance. And obviously there's going to be new stuff coming up real soon. We're going to have a new president. Okay, there's a 30-day vetting period, but there's probably going to be a gut reaction to that. Possible gut reactions to men's and women's Nebraska basketball games versus Texas A&M and the NCAA tournament on Friday. If you haven't done so yet, ladies and gentlemen, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything here on the Character Chronicles. Now, I'm going to go to some screen grabs that I took. Okay, in a span of 60 minutes this morning, this is via Mitch Sherman, Nebraska has found its president in Jeffrey Gold, if I hadn't said his name yet, and it's A.D. and Troy Dannon. All right, Nebraska football coach Matt Rule says he talked with Troy Dannon about the A.D. job. Rule is excited to work with Dannon, who wants to get back to his Midwestern roots. Okay, the coach said and understands the lofty expectations at Nebraska. Now, real quick, kind of getting to the president thing of this real quick, and we're going to do a whole other video on this eventually. Okay, the Nebraska Board of Regents picked... Dr. Jeffrey Gold, Chancellor at UNMC, to become the priority candidate of the university system. Dr. Gold, okay, let's see, I'm sorry, Regent Jim Shear of Norfolk said we're not on the moon, so it's not a step for mankind, but as sure as hell is a step for Nebraska. Okay, Regent Rob Schaefer of Beatrice gives a long kudos to interim president Chris Kaborik, says he's going to be a leadership uh, a leader of the university someday, and I hope of a university someday, and I hope it's here. Now the Regents voted eight to zero to approve Gold as the priority candidate. All right, student Regents vote four to zero, but their vote doesn't officially count. Just to be clear, but the Regents Schaefer and Tim Clear, they did actually leave the room, okay, to go make that phone call to Dr. Gold today. Gold has accepted. The clock has started on a 30-day vetting period. There will be more info about public forums posted shortly okay in the near future I should say now back to the AD okay and I, I've seen I did some quick research I learned about him but I just kind of scanned online why not everything you read online is 100% true and everyone's unbiased and nobody's a keyboard warrior right now I actually do love this account at Corn Nation John Johnson does a great job he just posed a question I thought was interesting does it bother anyone that this new AD guy was at Washington for only five months now, this was a funny response. One guy goes, make his buyout $800 million and I'll be good with it. But some of the other responses, Dr. Rob Zadica flat out said no. Okay, ruler of Husker Nation on Twitter said, got two promotions within that time frame and moving close to home. Tulane to Washington to Nebraska. Quite the promotions, okay? Uh, James Stevenson on Twitter, no, his whole family and his wife is, in, is from Iowa. Nebraska is a dream gig for him for that reason, okay? Vansity Skur, I hope I said that right on Twitter, was also the AD at Tulane for eight years, so he has been someplace for a pretty long period of time, darn near a decade. Zach McLeod on Twitter says, no, he wants to be closer to family and home. Loyalty didn't keep the last guy here. Why should we worry about that right now? It's just a different world, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, back to what Rule had to say on, on our new AD. And I quote, I'm so fired up about this hire. Interim President Kaborik has found exactly the right person to lead the Huskers forward. Troy sees what we see, that Nebraska is a special place with special people, a great vision, and the courage to be unabashed. Great word about wanting to win across the board. The fact that someone of Troy's caliber wants to join Nebraska will light a fire across our entire department. Let's go, end quote. All right, a little bit more from Coach Rule on Troy. Quote, and I quote, I think Troy fits all the criteria that I think we're looking for. He's an accomplished athletic director. He knows the issues facing college football. He's an unbelievable guy. It's no slight to the University of Washington, which is an unbelievable place. My sister's alma mater, not mine. This is Coach Rule talking, but I just know that he wanted to come home. He wanted to be here. I'm fired up. I'm excited to have him. I think the University of Nebraska took a step forward today. All right. Now, I'll be honest. I didn't know hardly anything about our new athletic director, okay? So I did some research, but before we dive into that research and we learn a little bit more together, okay, and then I give you some thoughts, check out dpsconstruction.net. If you're looking to have work done in the Omaha metro area, go to dpsconstruction.net. If you're looking for a great employer, if this is up your alley as far as your line of work, again, DBS Construction at dpsconstruction.net. Now here's some of the recon, some of the research I was able to do. 
by the way, my wife didn't want me to wear the sunglasses because she's recording and she didn't want her beautiful face to be seen on camera. My wife does a great job behind the scenes. All right. University of Nebraska interim president Chris Kaborg announced today that he has named Troy Dannon a leading voice in college collegiate athletics with extensive experience as an athletic director and a deep ties to the Midwest and Big Ten as Nebraska's next AD effective Friday. All right, Dan currently serves as director of athletics at the University of Washington, a fellow Big Ten institution. Previously, he was an AD at Tulane and before that led athletics at his alma mater, the University of Northern Iowa. Dan brings Midwestern roots, having grown up on a farm just outside Marsh, Marshalltown, Iowa. I hope I said that right. Oh, quite. Okay. And I quote, from my first conversation with Dan, and I knew he was a perfect fit for Nebraska, end quote, Kaborik said he, he is a fierce competitor. He holds himself and his programs to uncommonly high standards, and he cares personally about the success of student athletes in sports, school, and life. Troy sees the vision and momentum we have here from our bold investments in, a, in facilities to our success in the classroom to our bold plan to elevate our national reputation and competitiveness, and he is excited to be a part of it. I am thrilled that we found someone who is 100% aligned with our high expectations and will be all in on Nebraska. Now, I've got more info, but just a couple of thoughts real quick. I think it is important that Matt Rule's on board. Now, we got to get the football program going in the right direction, but it seems to be going that way. And Matt Rule is that guy, and he has said that he wants to be here. And the AD and the football coach, let's be honest, they tend to go hand in hand, okay? And so I like these, of course, he's going to say positive things, but it feels legit. It feels real. He had conversations before he was hired. And I guarantee Rule was like, hey, man, they got high expectations here. Hey, this is a special place. Like, if you want to be a part of it, you got to really want to be a part of it. Okay. And it's pretty clear the Rule feels good about all of those things. So that's something that I genuinely feel good about at this very early stage, very early moment. I have had some textual exchanges, some conversations briefly, briefly with people. Okay, it's all been positive so far, but I like that. It seems that our new athletic director understands what Nebraska is about. He wants to be here because of family ties closely. We'll ignore that they're from Iowa, wink, wink, close enough, if you will. And he seems to be, from what I understand, on board with those important things. All right, let's move on. Dannon has been at Washington since 2023. He's also in his fourth year as a chair of the NCAA football competition committee and as an executive committee committee member of the Football Oversight Committee, a lot of committees in there, from 2021 through 2023, Dannon served on the NCAA Constitution Committee and then the Division I Transformation Committee as one of a small group of chancellors, presidents, directors of athletic commissioners and faculty athletic representatives across all three NCAA divisions tasked with chartering a future path for college athletics. In 2022, Dannon was a finalist for the Sports Business Journal's Athletic Director of the Year Award, and he received the Distinguished American Award by the Sugar Bowl chapter of the National Football Foundation. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know what all those things are. Okay, I know some of them, not all of them. Here's what I'll tell you. Those are good indicators when you have things like that that you can put on your resume. When you're going somewhere new and people are trying to learn about you, makes a good impression. All right, he arrived at Washington after serving as director of athletics in Tulane since 2015. While at Tulane, the Green Wave students, athlete, student athletes earned 49 All-American honors, won a national championship, 21 conference championships, and earned 41 postseason appearances. In 2023, Tulane football has been on the rise. If you haven't been following, they darn near made a New Year's Six bowl game again last year, like they did two years ago. In 2022-2023, Tulane football won their first American athletic football conference championship and won the Cotton Bowl over USC, who was ranked ninth in the nation at the time. All right, two short paragraphs left. Dan and spearheaded fundraising efforts, and this is going to apply to what's been going on here at Nebraska. Okay, Dan has spearheaded fundraising efforts and numerous capital projects at Tulane. He helped secure the largest unrestricted gift in Tulane athletics history, an endowment gift which funds the operation of a new sport sailing Sailing, I like that. And a $10 million lead gift for capital renovations, which is the second largest gift in department history. In addition, marketing and licensing revenue grew fourfold. And in 2023, Tulane football, basketball, and volleyball set ticket sales and revenue records under Dannon's leadership. The Green Wave Club annual fund grew by 40% in terms of donors and 45% in terms of dollars. I don't know if people know this, and I don't know if people want to admit this. Being a fundraiser is a huge part of uh, being an athletic director. It's ginormous. Okay, so as I learn more about him, 
It's hard to learn much from his time at Washington. It was short, but it, you learn a lot of great things from his time at Tulane, which is why Washington hired him. Okay, and it's why Nebraska went after him as well. Increases in fundraising and major gift donors positively impacted capital projects, development, and completion of $13 million renovation to the Riley Natatorium, hope I did that justice trying to pronounce it right, home of the swimming and diving program, as well as an $8 million in renov renovations to locker rooms, and the Wilson Center Sports Medicine Center were completed in 2023. Dannon also oversaw construction of a new dining facility, weight room, basketball, and volleyball locker room. Tulane also completed a $2.4 million academic center renovation, a $5 million television and digital production center. Now, I tried to read that quickly because there was a lot of information, so I tried to go fast. I don't know if I paused at all the appropriate commas and periods and everything, but I tried to go quick. If you think about what's been going on in Nebraska, if you think about what we're trying to do in the, with the future here in Nebraska, a lot of that applies directly, and it makes a lot of sense, okay? Now, again, it's very early on, but I've heard nothing but positive things. I've heard nothing but good things, okay? There's always going to be concerns, but those are always going to exist no matter what, especially with the new unknown person that we're trying to educate ourselves a little bit more about. But I have received multiple texts, honestly, from some of the AD candidates who didn't get the job themselves, okay? And they had nothing but great things to say, all right? Um, I think initially, I feel like it's a good hire. How do I say this without this sounding like a shot? And I know some people are openly taking shots at Trev. That is not my intent. Maybe Trev leaving was for the better across the board when it comes to, we have someone who seems to want to be here now. We have someone who, and then Matt Rule and Trev were on the same page or seemingly so before. Matt Rule's excited about it. Someone who seemingly wants to be here. He has roots here locally. Okay, family locally. And a lot of what he's done is similar to what Nebraska was doing. Okay, as we know, Trev was kind of seeking out other jobs at points in time while he was here. Okay, that's, that just is what it is. And I feel like we, from all indications early on, we may have someone who's a little bit more on board for the long term going forward. At least that's my initial impression. All right, ladies and gentlemen, questions for you fine folks at home. Let me know, let me know in the comments below, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Number one, do you like this hire? Just simply put yes or no. If you want to elaborate, go ahead. Number two, do you like who it appears our next president is going to be? And keep in mind, all eight boards of regents voted him to be our next president or our priority candidate. And I've seen nothing but positive things online about him so far. Number three, do you like how our leadership at Nebraska has responded since Trev Alberts did leave? All right, until next time, Husker Nation, go big red noise. Remember to throw the butt. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial.